Welcome to Greywood Gardening. I am in the seed starting layer at the very beginning of February, which means it is still too early to be starting any seeds. So what I thought I would do is talk a little bit about the plans for the 2020-22 gardening year and sort of the big picture stuff that we're hoping to get done. And while I talk about that, I am going to be potting up some of this aloe vera that I had uh, that had gotten overgrown and I divided it about a week ago. It should be ready to be planted now. So the very big picture, there's two main things that we're hoping to accomplish this year. I need more soil. Two main things that we're hoping to accomplish this year. Um, we're going to be working again on expanding the veggie garden and we're going to be putting in a large new flower garden. So starting with the veggie garden, priorities for the veggie garden this year include, I would like to build some more raised beds, uh, which I have been just about every year. Um, ideally, I would build three more large raised beds, which are 10 feet by four feet, and two more small ones that are four feet by four feet. And at least one of those small ones I want to use for planting mint, uh, someplace where I can't escape and wander all over the place. Um, so in addition to building the new raised beds, uh, I want to get up another trellis or two. That's the problem is I have more vining plants on my garden plan for this year than I have trellis for them. And so adding another trellis or two will let me get everything planted that I'm hoping to. Um, I'm also hoping to come up with some sort of an insect netting solution um, for the raised beds. What I'm, I'm hoping to create is something that I can set on top of the four foot by 10 foot raised beds uh, with insect netting over it and then be able to like hinge it or something so we can like lift it up, but also something that can be like dismantled and stored flat in the shed over the winter. One of the big projects in the veggie garden for this year is gonna be finally putting in some asparagus. I dug out an in-ground bed uh, that's about 30 feet long by three feet wide that uh, last year I uh, planted that full of the peppers for the pepper pot experiment. But the long-term plan for that bed has always been that that is where the asparagus is gonna go. So I plan to plant 30 to 40 asparagus plants this year. And they'll be probably like half green asparagus and half purple. Um, so it'll be a couple years before we get a harvest off of that, but it's going to be very exciting to finally start getting some of those perennials in the ground and growing. Now I had another much larger in-ground bed that I dug out, and so the plan was that bed is supposed to be the berry bed. We'll be planting raspberries, blueberries, maybe even some blackberries, even though they're technically not zone four, we might give them some extra protection. But um, because it was so late, I put a bunch of elemental sulfur in to try to lower the pH, because blueberries in particular really need a pH below five. Um, I really just don't think it had enough time, and thinking about it, I think the right thing to do is hold off for another year and have a year, a full year, to spend uh, working on gradually getting uh, the pH into place in that bed. So maybe what I'll do is sometime in the spring, check in on the status of the pH and uh, give it another adjustment and maybe plant a cover crop. Um, and then halfway through the year, we can just till the cover crop under, check the pH again, do another adjustment. But this way, we should really be able to get the pH all the way down to where it needs to be and stable where it needs to be before planting um, any of the blueberries. Other than major projects, um, we have several crop goals for the year. We're obviously going to be planting just about everything we planted last year. We had a phenomenal year last year in the veggie garden. We had just incredible harvests of almost everything. One exception, though, was sweet corn. We grew sweet corn. We did not get to harvest any sweet corn. And the problem we had is the corn ears almost grew out of the husks. Um, and when I tried to look that up online to see what the heck was going on, um, the, the solution or the answer appeared to be that it's something that can happen that's caused by extreme heat and drought, um, followed by periods of, you know, lots of water, which we certainly had some extreme heat and drought last year. I think my solution for this is going to be to plant the sweet corn further apart, to increase the spacing. So I was planting with something 
more like square foot gardening spacing where they're you know maybe six inches apart four inches apart um, so packed in there fairly tightly and I think what I'm going to do is actually just plant one per square foot which even if I do half a bed that's still going to give me you know, 20 uh, sweet corn plants which should be more sweet corn than we're going to eat but by spacing them out I should be able to give them the same amount of water and nutrients that I give everything else in the garden and yet still have more water and nutrients available to each sweet corn plant because I am not interested in going out and doing special watering regimen for just half of one bed in the garden. So in addition to trying to succeed with the sweet corn this year, we're also going to be doing some potatoes and specifically we're going to be doing uh, bucket potatoes. Uh, which I've seen for years, people who, who grow potatoes in like big bags or big big pots, big buckets. I've grown them before in the ground, and I just don't have the space in the garden to devote to that. And so uh, I'm very excited, and Mrs. Graywood's very excited, to try growing some of these bucket potatoes. We have a couple giant pots uh, that some apple trees last year came in. And so we're going to try uh, just tossing those uh, in the paths or in the undeveloped area of the veggie garden and see if we can grow some potatoes in a bucket. And if so, that should be a really easy way to get a decent amount of potatoes without using up any of our precious um, garden bed space. Um, otherwise, Mrs. Graywood has specifically requested that she wants to be able to make salsa out of only stuff we grow in the gardens. So we're really close to being able to do that right now. Um, we grow most of what we need, obviously other than limes. Um, but I will just need to make sure to get some successions of cilantro planted later in the year because it's tough because cilantro wants to bolt in the heat of summer. And so you really need lots of successions to deal with that. Um, but we also need to do better on onions. So we grew onions, we grew red onions last year, uh, and they grew really, really well in, for most of the spring and early summer. Um, but then they finished growing and they were only like golf ball sized. Um, it was the middle of summer, they had all flopped over, and I don't know if they had just been, decided, hey, we're done growing and this is as big as we got, or if we have a neighbor cat who likes to come hang out in our veggie garden and I notice that cat likes to roll around in the onion patch so I don't know if the cat was just laying in the onion patch because it was flat or if the cat laying in the onion patch is what flattened everything anyhow the plan for this year is to uh, I direct seeded all of the onions last year so the plan this year is to direct seed half of them and uh, to start half of them inside seeing if that uh, starting inside like maybe even as early as mid to late February uh, can give enough of an advantage to get bigger onions and with bigger onions you know we've already got we got the garlic we got the tomatoes uh, we got the jalapenos we got I think everything we need um, except for those onions and then cilantro at the right time of year then my one of my goals this year is actually more on the herb side but I would really like to grow everything we need to, I think I might need bigger pots for these. I want two, three, four, okay. I would really like to grow everything that we need um, to make chili powder. Um, I'd like to experiment with making chili powder this year. Uh, we use quite a bit of chili powder in the Greywood household and chili powder is actually a whole bunch of different spices. It's a lot of different spices mixed together. Um, many of which we already grow, um, but there's a couple of new ones. I need to get paprika. So I have ordered paprika pepper seeds, so I will grow some paprika peppers. But the really tough one is going to be cumin. Uh, so cumin is a seed, which I've never grown before, but it has a 120 days to maturity so it's it needs a lot of time for a Minnesota growing season so I'm hoping I started it inside getting it started early enough and you know given how, how great our falls have been lately we should by late fall have cumin seeds to harvest 
other problem, as I understand it, is that cumin plants don't produce like a huge abundance of seeds. So you actually need a lot of space to get a lot of seeds. Uh, I'm, for an experiment, I'm not going to give it a lot of space. And if I get just enough seeds to make like a few teaspoons of cumin, I'm going to consider it a success, even if I have to use store-bought cumin for the rest. Um, so that's my big uh, new thing that I'm trying to accomplish. Um, this, I think, is problematic. It's great having that big anchor, but this pot is too short. So we have to get a bigger pot for that one. So the other thing Mrs. Graywood uh, has asked to do, which is very interesting, is she wants to grow mushrooms. So I'm kind of excited by this because it's a great idea that I never thought of because we have all of this forest, right? Uh, Greywood is just surrounded by forest on all sides. Um, and so what a great way to use some of that forest space for actually growing food. Now, I don't know a whole ton about growing mushrooms, so I'm going to have to research. But I think from what little I do know that we're probably going to want to grow something like uh, King's Teferia, like a wine cap mushroom that you can grow in wood chips because we have lots of wood chips um, and I've been working on building a path in the woods that I have wood chipped and it's a really wide path that the tractor can get down and it would be great to just go part way into the woods and then have like a little mushroom bed on the side. Um, now I know a lot of mushrooms are grown in logs where you like drill a hole in a log and shove a little mushroom plug in and my, at least from what I know about that, that sounds a lot more complicated um, and can involve a lot more, a lot more time, a lot more considerations about the quality of the log. Uh, I'm going to look into it because it would be nice to grow more than just one type of mushroom. Um, but, uh, but definitely something that I can grow in the wood chips and then maybe something that we grow in logs as well. So that's basically it for new stuff that we want to do in the veggie garden. We're of course going to keep growing all the stuff that we grew last year and the peppers and tomatoes and salad greens. Ooh, one change with the salad greens I discovered was not to grow lettuce in the summer. I did that last year and we, and it, it grew fine. We used salad over of lettuce. It handled the heat magnificently, but we, we stopped eating lettuce because once we started producing zucchini and cucumbers and then peppers. We were so desperately trying to keep up with all of this produce and eat it before it went bad that we stopped having salads entirely and we were spending all of our team time eating the rest of this stuff. So, um, no, no summer salad. We'll just do salad, salad greens in the spring and then maybe some in the fall because it's nice to have them at the end of the year. Um, I think like in October. All right, so in addition to uh, the veggie garden, the big new thing we're focused on this year is going to be putting in a butterfly garden. So I think we're going to put the butterfly garden in along the wildflower meadow. So there's this, this area by the wildflower meadow that I always end up driving the tractor from the driveway to the back of the house to do stuff. So we've kind of like created like a little path, like a road along there. And so just on the side of that path, maybe five to ten feet deep, you know, maybe like an eight to 10 foot wide garden, but that goes for like 50 feet long and have that whole thing planted up as a butterfly garden. And so for me, the focus of the butterfly garden is mostly gonna be on host plants for the caterpillars rather than nectar plants, uh, because we have a whole wildflower meadow there uh, that's always covered with butterflies. There's plenty of nectar plants for them. So instead what I wanna do is get the plants that the caterpillars need to eat, although I'm also going to take advantage of the fact that I'm building it to plant some flowers that I just don't have now that I've always wanted to grow, like Joe Pieweed, that are particularly good nectar plants. So the main plants that I plan on putting in there uh, for host plants is, obviously, we'll toss in some milkweed for monarchs, but we do have a lot of milkweed at other places uh, around the property. Um, I plan to put in a bunch of violets, just a bunch of common violets, which are the host plants for, for all kinds of uh, fritillary, like the whole fritillary family of butterflies in Minnesota use the violets as host plants. They also overwinter in the litter. Uh, I'm also gonna put in a bunch of prairie clover, uh, which is host plant for all of the sulfurs, the orange sulfur and yellow sulfur, as well as I think a couple of other butterflies. Um, hey, 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 don't eat the lettuce. Um, we'll also have some stuff in the dill family, including a plant called Rattlesnake Master that looks pretty cool. 
Um, and those are host plants for black swallowtail butterflies, which look phenomenal. Um, and then I think there's one other main one. Oh, just snapdragons. We're gonna have snapdragons for the, the buckeye. So, so we should have like a pretty good variety of host plants for a whole lot of different native butterflies. It's also worth noting there's plenty of butterflies that um, like the tiger swallowtail, which is my favorite butterfly, but it eats willow and aspen, um, and so it feeds off of trees. Anyhow, in addition to that, the plan is to include some flowers for the very early part of the year and the very late part of the year, which is when the mild wildflower meadow isn't at its best. In the first year, this garden's not gonna look spectacular, right? It's gonna be a whole bunch of young plants that I started from seed or that I bought as plugs, as little seedlings. There's a lot of perennials that aren't gonna look that great until the second year. So the first year, the butterfly garden's not gonna be terribly impressive looking. And so I wanna make sure I'm also including a bunch of annuals and stuff that will, you know, provide some color and attraction on the very first year. Otherwise, it's gonna be mostly trying to keep the meadow out of it long enough for all of these, these uh, native host plants to establish. So that is the big picture of what I'm hoping to accomplish this year at Greywood. Expanding the veggie garden, experimenting with some new kinds of plants and mushrooms, fungi, who knew? Um, and then building this really pretty large butterfly garden right on the edge of the wildflower meadow. All right, until next time, I need to find a bigger pot for this guy. Happy gardening.